Winter Wonderland is an annual event at London's Hyde Park featuring funfair style rides and eateries and quite often substantial crowds of people as well. And with this significant quantity of people in a relatively small area, the networks are forced to adapt to provide the capacity required for customers to be able to share the experience and the rides on social media and so on. In today's video, I will be featuring the range of solutions that O2 has deployed for their customers at Winter Wonderland. The first site is their CCI MBA9F KE3A Behemoth Multi Beam Events Capacity site. So, this features a CCI antenna with three low band beams, each with UO9 and LO8, and six high band beams, each with L21, L18. The site also radiates three sectors of L23, which will either be through alternating with through the beams, so say using beam 1, 3 and 5, or through the use of T-splitters to connect one 2300 MHz base station sector to two beams at the antenna, which I show in the schematic on the next slide. But this antenna is used quite commonly amongst mobile network operators of the world for deploying capacity for stadia and high density, high demand locations of a temporarily short nature such as this is. As you would expect, the site schematic is really quite complicated, but I'm going to break it down into its sort of component sections to try and make things a little bit simpler. So starting off with the low band side of things, we have our three beams of U09 and L08. And of course, a typical macro site has three sectors. So actually, as far as this is concerned, it's actually not all that different to a conventional macro site. And additionally, because Nokia's radios portfolio have numerous radios that have high numbers of pipes or transmit capabilities, there aren't actually that many radios involved for the low band or even actually the high band side of things. So for 800 megahertz, we can have an FRME or an FRMF, which is 6TX, 6RX. So one radio will do the three beams or three sectors of the site. And for 900 megahertz, it's much the same story, but the FXDB is 3TX, 6RX, and that's because 3G does not have two transmit streams to the device, and therefore three transmit is enough for providing one transmit per beam for the three beam site. Now, the connections from these radios are diplexed together, so the 800 and 900 megahertz is combined into each beam of the CCI antenna. On the high band beam side of things, the story is actually relatively similar. So for 1800 MHz, they are likely using FXED radios, which are 6 transmit, 6 receive, and therefore only two of them are required for all six beams of the site. For 2100 MHz, they could either be using the 6TX, 6RX, FRGU radios with one for every three beams, or be using a pair of 3TX, 6RX, FRGTs per three beam. The 2300 MHz I have got down using conventional 2300 MHz remote radios that O2 use on their macro size, the FZNJs, although they could be using other radios for this purpose because the FZNJs are usually 44R and on this temporary site O2's 2300 was 2T2R. But anyway, as I said on the previous slide, there are two possible ways they could be getting 
three sectors or three beams of 2300 megahertz out of this site. The first is by alternating beams on the panel. So have 2300 megahertz coming out of beam one, three and five, for example. Or the other option is to use T-splitters so that each feed from the 2300 megahertz radio effectively feeds two beams at the antenna side of things. And I think based on the radiation pattern that we observed at Winter Wonderland, that's possibly the more likely option of the two. So the 2300 megahertz radio output goes to a T-splitter and then effectively gets split into two as if it to serve effectively two beams. And all in all, the 1800, the 2100 and the 2300 all get fed into triplexers which combine them all together and then send them up to the antennas. The next macro site is a little bit simpler, but only a bit. So this one resembles really a fairly conventional tri-sector macro site, albeit on a temporary kind of pole. And this uses three triple band comscope antennas, each with one low band and two high bands, and carries UGO9, L08, L18, L21 and L23. So for the 800MHz I've got it down as the same as the last setup, so 6TX, 6RX radio, either FRME or FRMF and that will serve all three sectors of the site. And then for 900MHz as this has 2G and 3G I have gone with a pair of FXDBs. Then for high band, because this site has three sectors, our friendly 60x6 RX radios mean that actually you could get by with a single FXED for 1800 MHz and then a single FRGU for 2100 MHz or alternatively a pair of FRGTs as they are 3TX6RX as I said before. On the 2300MHz side of things, because of the ports available and the fact this is using conventional antennas and three sets of configuration, I have gone for a 4T4R build configuration on this site although I wasn't able to test the actual sort of capability from a device point of view when I was there due to limited time, so who knows, it might have only been 2T2R. But anyway, with the FZNJs, therefore you'd have one per sector, and because of the ports available, I have triplexed 1800, 2100, 2300 into two of the high band ports in each antenna, and then got the remaining two 2300 MHz feeders going to the other pair of high band ports on each antenna. O2 didn't just have macro temporary sites at Winter Wonderland either, they also have four two sector micro cells as well. And these all have U09, L08, L18 and L21. And as each one is two sector, I have come up with a configuration that is pretty much the same as the previous site, but without L23 and with each base station only serving two out of the possible three sectors. Now, as the antennas here are only two port, you therefore need to quadruplex all the bands together in order to feed them into the antennas. Although they could also be using a combination of say diplexers to also achieve much the same functional effect as a quadruplexer in this case. Just before I end the video I would just like to add that O2 do also have Wi-Fi deployed at certain parts of Winter Wonderland following on from what they did at Country File Live, which I also covered the temporary sites that O2 had deployed in, so check out that video if you haven't seen it already. So thanks for watching this video about O2's 
network solution at Winterbond Land High Park for this year, 2018. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I hope to see you on the next one. Special thanks go to Jake for accompanying me on the London trip last Sunday and joining me for various network testing and a bit of photography as well. Also, thanks to Chris for being the usual point of contact for all things knowledge about O2.